case the user chose one, we're going to set max tries and max guess. So the max number of guesses equals 10. Max tries equals five. So they have to get one, they have to guess a number out of ten, and they got five tries to do it. And then you're gonna break out of there. Okay. Case two. Max guesses. Two hundred. I decided to make it interesting. And they have. That's right. Max tries. Give them five tries again to get it. So choose menu option three. Max guess uh, 500. Out of 500, we'll give them a little more leeway. Give them 10 guesses. No, we'll not give them 10. We'll give them 20. We can fine tune this later. All right, case four. They choose the fourth option. Okay, the fourth option is going to be the hardest game setting. Max guesses. The max guess, the highest they can guess out of is 2,000. And they have to get it in 30 tries, yeah? And break out of the loop. Now we need a way to exit the game. So, case 5. Um, you don't have to worry about setting these game variables. I mean, you could set them all to zero to make it look neat and tidy. It's completely unnecessary. In case 5, return 0. Now, if you notice, by returning 0 here, if they press 5, it's never going to say thanks for playing. Right? It's just not going to, because um, the loop is going to go on forever, as long as it's set to 1. So this is a game design bug, and it's going to go unnoticed. Unless you're specifically debugging and you're looking for this line of output, you're not going to notice that this bug in your code exists. Now what you would have to do to exit the while loop is actually to set playing to something else. Anything except one. You can set it to 999, uh, 5248, 7, you can set it to negative 4. Anything other than one and it will exit this loop properly. So instead of putting return 0, we're going to set playing. change it by one. We'll increment it by one. You know what? No, that's that's poor code. Um, that's actually arithmetic. It's going to take more CPU cycles than to just set it to something random. Okay, so we'll set it to seven. It, it, it doesn't really matter, like I said, what you put that to. Set it to anything other than one. And then break. Alright, so after all that's done, Now, this is, see the way I wrote this, it's still going to execute the game code here, right? And then it's going to go into the playing loop function. We don't want that if playing is not equals to 1, right? So, if playing, and this is not even the best way to do it either, we could, we could do if playing not equal to one. We're going to use a go to statement. Um, this is very poor code, and you should never use a go to statement ever for anything. But I'm using it because you need to learn it. Alright? I'm going to go to end game. Okay? Now, end game is going to be over here. It's just like that. And then you put the, the semicolon and the colon. See the difference? Just like this, semicolon, colons, it's not the same. Alright, so what happens is if playing is not equal to 1, it's going to jump here, put this, exit. Um, it's still going to bypass the while loop because of the way I've designed it here. Um, it's tough getting around certain things you're used to when you're trying to make it simpler based on the tutorials I've done already. Um, notice there's no brackets here, no swirly brackets. You can omit the you can omit those when you're writing an if statement that has just one line in it. So it's 
if this is true, it's going to run the next line. If it's not true, it's going to skip this line and go to the next one because there's no bracket. It's the same as if you put the brackets. If you put the brackets, it's going to run the brackets. If it's not true, it's going to skip the brackets. The brackets basically tells the compiler that, hey, cheat this is one function and basically an if. It's kind of like an inline function. An if statement is kind of like an inline function with a little bit of AI involved. Um, I'm not going to get into that here. Um, so now that we've done that, um, we need to set the random numbers up based on what our user has chosen. Chosen, sorry. So unsigned, because it's going to be a positive number. And you don't have to do that. I'm trying to make it a habit for you, because it's always good to be more clear. Um, you can catch more compiler errors that way. Anyhow, the game number is equal to a random number. See the random? Pay very close attention to what I'm typing from here, because this is new to you if you've been following my tutorials. Alright, so this little function right here is going to return a random number. To base it on what you want, use the modulus operator, which is just a percent sign. And then we're going to use our max guess. Alright, now it take now it take, it's going to take that number and divide it by 1, because it always starts from 0. So if you tell a random number to generate a number from up to 7, a random number, it's always going to be from 0. So if you tell it from 7, it's going to give you anything from 0 to 6. Because 0 in C++, it's a number. Just And it well should be. 0 is a number. I mean, just basic logic, right? So when we write it this way, we need to just tell it plus 1. Because we don't want to include 0. So from 1 to whatever the max guess was, you have to add 1 to that. Because it's going to be 0 to whatever we actually showed in the user, minus 1. So add the 1 to that. Trust me. Take it off later um, when you're messing around with this code. I want you to take that plus one out of there and then uh, see what happens. Okay, it's 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 going it's a it's bug. If you don't put the plus one, it's a bug based on what we've done here. If you say uh, one nine nine nine, you would still have to put the plus one. If I'm making it clear, because the user's going to expect one nine nine nine. But if you don't put the plus one and you set the random number generator to get off this, it's going to be one nine nine eight because it starts at zero. It doesn't start at one anyway. Okay. Now we're gonna call our function play equals to play game. I've made a, instead of just putting the play game, like, um, instead of just doing it like this, um, I'm actually going to change it up a bit from what I've previously written. I'm going to take this out, because I want you to see something here. Play is our loop, so playing, we'll set playing to equals play game 1, so based on what the playing returns, we can use that to break the um, the loop. So pay attention to that from what I'm going to do here. Okay. So this is basically our game driver right here. We set up our memory location for our menu. We see the number generator, so it's actually going to be random each time. And we set the the loop variable where we're going to keep track of playing or not to one. And then we're going to enter the loop. We're going to show the menu and get that value. And then based on the value returned from our menu we are going to set the game variables. If you remember, it sets the game behavior up here. And then, of course, this is what's going to uh, do right here. So it's going to come down here. It's going to set the number of generators, blah, blah, blah. Game number, yada, yada. Now, that's our driver program. I'll have to take that out as well. That's our driver program. Now we need to actually write the functions that are going to drive this, and we're going to drive that, and we're going to drive the menu. All right, we have them up here. It's prototype, so we we know what to expect. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is make our play game function. Um, this here in the prototype, 